What up, everyone? This is Tim Ali, the Reverend of the Revolution. Welcome you to your daily revolution. Today's topic, homework, tears, and confronting. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My son just got out of a car with tears in his eyes. He did not want to get out of a car. He was begging me to not have to go to school. My other son, out the door, ready to rock and roll. Now, why would my son, who always gets his homework done, who's always on time, gets up early, was in tears this morning? Like he was sobbing. I don't want to go to class. It took me some master parenting and skills to figure out what was going on. And here's what happened. He did not get his homework done. He didn't get his homework done. And what happened was they got home, and then within an hour and a half, we were off to the park to see one of our families off. One of our close family friends is moving out of state, and we spent three hours down at the beach yesterday roasting marshmallows, making s'mores, playing volleyball, tossing the football, just having a grand old time. We also came off of a cruise over the weekend, so there's fatigue, there's no sleep, there's junk food, and we didn't get homework done. So he's begging me, Dad, please, I, I, let me go home and do my homework, then bring me back to school. And I said, no, son. You got to get out of the car. You got to take some deep breaths, and you got to get to school. You got to go. Now, why is this so significant or empowering? I was faced with a decision as a father. Do I protect my son, allow him to not go face and confront? Do I allow him to avoid and hide and cover up something that happened? Or do I allow him to step into the fire, face and confront and handle this thing? Of course, you know what I did? With all the love of a parent's heart, I said, son, it's time to go now. This started happening right out the gate as we left our home. So give me about five minutes to have a conversation with him. And what I said to him was really simple. I said, son, right now there's a story going on with you. What's the story that's causing you to feel this way? And we've talked about stories. We've talked about truths, thoughts. And we got to the root of it. And I said, what do you, what's causing you to cry and to be upset about not wanting to go to school and homework? And he simply said, I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, well, what do you mean by that? What, what makes you think you're going to get in trouble? And again, he's crying. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to get out of the car. And I already know. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to not get your work done. I know what it's like to have a story about not getting homework done or not getting work done or not doing what you said you would do. See, as human beings, we guilt ourselves a lot. And we actually make up bigger, worse stories than what's really going to happen. And I had to help him discover this. It's one thing if I just tell him what's going to happen, but it's another thing, a whole more powerful level to help him discover what's really going to happen. And the fact is, what's really going to happen is like nothing. Yeah, maybe he gets a negative mark. Maybe he doesn't get to go to recess. Yeah, what, I mean, it's it's insignificant in the big picture, but in the small details, right? Being in the weeds, right? In the situation, it's hard for him to see. And he finally said, Daddy, like, they're gonna, th- my teacher's gonna think I'm, and then he said it. I'm a loser. I could not believe my son was saying this. Even at 11 years of age, my son already makes up stories. But I'm not surprised. Human beings, we are storytellers. We make up stories. That's what we do. We make up and we invent stories. I began to coach my son as my other son had left the car and it's us and we're now getting to the point where he's got to get out of the car. And I just said, I asked him some simple questions. Son, is that true? I go take a deep breath. He's got tears coming out. I was like, you got to hear me. Is that true? 
that your teacher's gonna think you're a loser. No, then what? What's really going to happen? She's like, I don't know. I was like, it's, she won't think that. And I asked some more questions. Again, this was all about perspective. Principle number two is perspective creates possibilities. I said, son, do you know why your teacher teaches? He's like, because they want to help us? Yeah. Your teacher wants to help you. That's what your teacher wants to do. So I talked about, you know, hey, I could let you stay. I could bring, take you home. But that, what does that do? That's not taking responsibility. That's us avoiding and running away from and not confronting what we're responsible for. We talked about ownership. Again, I have a lot of terms and a lot of language with my sons that when we talk about ownership and responsibility, there's a, a baseline, right? There's a, a foundation of conversations we've had over the years. Now, this is significant for you, my friend, listening to this, because you as an adult, as a human being, you make up stories. Just like my son. Just like me. Like, you make up stories right now in your world that make you feel specific things and have you cause, like, have you experience feelings and emotions. And the question I would have you consider is, what stories are your go-to stories? What's your go-to victim story? What's your go-to pity story? What's your go-to, I hope they feel sorry for me story? What's your go-to, I shouldn't make more money story, so I'm going to stay where I'm at story? What's your, I'm too tired story? We all have them. This morning as I woke up at 4.30, I'm coming off of a cruise over the weekend and I'm tired. I ain't going to even try to pretend I am exhausted. And as I laid in bed, I laid in bed for 10 minutes like, oh, I do not want to go. I'm too tired. I need more sleep. And at 4.40, I got up, threw my AirPods in, got ready, and hit the, the gym. And it was sets of 50 on the legs today. Sets of 50, 40, 30, 20. It was a nasty leg workout. My legs are feeling it. But see, my go-to story is I'll be okay. I, 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 you, you should sleep more, Satema. In the spiritual realm, one of the stories that, that gets in the way for me is, it's not, it's not important. You don't need this. You don't need to do this. It's not that bad. It's not that bad if you don't study the holy scriptures. It's not that bad if you don't pray to God. It ain't that bad if you don't go to church. Again, I'm a church. I'm a God-fearing, worshiping man. In the relationship realm, it's not that bad. You, you know what? Your kids need to be. You need to yell at your kids. That's how you get them to move. And in the business realm, one of the stories that one of my go-to stories that's a non-powerful, disempowering story is: you don't need that much money, Satema. You don't need that much. Just chill. Just relax. You don't need to work that hard. But see, these stories are non—they're non-powerful. They're disempowering. And as I told my son today, son. Let's go confront this thing. Let's go confront this thing. Like, let's, let's, let's go do this, son. You got this. Come on. And I talked to him and I had him repeat things back. I had him take some deep breaths. I had him wipe his tears and blow his nose. Like, he did not want to go. And in my heart, there's a piece of me that's like, oh, man, I don't want my son to feel this way. But I'm like, no, I will do my son a disservice if I let him off the hook. I will do him wrong and harm. Like I will do him no good if I just let him like come back home and not, like he got to confront things, parents. Like don't let your kids get too soft. So that that was it today. Tears and homework and stories and it was great because he got out of the car and he slammed the door. He was mad. I'm like that's okay. This will serve you, my son. This will serve you. And again, obviously, when he gets home today. We're going to have a conversation about it. See, for you parents, two things. You make up stories. Can you identify those stories that do not serve you, that are not even true? And do you let your kids off the hook? You know, do you cover for them? Do you enable them to be weak and non-powerful? What are you going to do about this? Challenge your stories and don't give your kids easy way out. Don't do it. 
Let them be strong. Teach them. Show them. Let them confront. Go confront. Go face this thing that you're running from. And it's never, never, never as bad as you make it out to be. This is Satem reminding you, if you're going to create a life of real radical results, a life that you love, it's going to require you to get into a relentless pursuit with a ruthless commitment to pay the piper every single day so that you can get to the top of your mountain where your prize, promises, and possibilities are waiting, just waiting for you. The revolution has begun. Join us. I'm out. For more info on joining the revolution and living your greatest life of prosperity today, go to www.yourdailyrevolution.com and join us in waking up, turning your brain on, and prospering today.